Hi guys, welcome back to part four of this introduction to multiple regression. In this final part, we're going to talk about how to handle categorical independent variables. So can we handle things like gender, race, state, political affiliation, and regression? Yes, we can. So things like blood type, marital status, whether you're a smoker or not, whether it's a holiday or not, and so on can be used as predictors in regression with some pre-processing. So we have something called the dummy variables that come into play. A dummy variable is a binary variable, which means it's coded as a 0 or a 1. <clears throat> if a categorical variable has C levels, so something like gender has two levels, so C would be 2, we must create C minus one dummy variables. So for gender, we would have to create just one dummy variable before we can use that variable in uh, our regression analysis. So if, if we're dealing with something like um, uh, political affiliation perhaps has three or four levels. So let's say you're either an independent or Republican or Democrat. So let's say it has C equals three levels, we'll have to create two dummy variables. Okay, So first, we arbitrarily choose one of the levels as <clears throat> a, what's called a baseline. Okay, um, So it, for gender, we could either choose male or female as our baseline. It doesn't matter. For political affiliation, we have a choice of those three levels that I explained. Um, we could choose any one of those. You just pick one as your baseline. Once you've pick the baseline, you create a separate dummy variable, so you could kind of set this up as separate columns for the remaining levels. So again, you're going to have C minus 1 remaining levels, so you're going to make C minus 1 columns or dummy variables. You're going to name these newly created dummy variables after the levels of the, uh, that are remaining, okay? Of course, not including the baseline, okay? So, and then finally, you have this kind of set up. Then we're going to use number one if that level is present, and zero if that level is absent to actually get the, the values for the dummy variables for each observation in your data. Okay, so the best way to see this is with an example. So, here I'm going to create a dummy variable from gender. So, I, I'm starting with this data. Um, I don't have this blue column yet. This is what I create. So first I choose male. So I arbitrarily chose male as my baseline. So my baseline was male. So I have, uh, by the way, C is 2 for gender. So I'm going to create one dummy. OK. So I, since I choose male as my, my baseline, female becomes the name of my dummy. OK. And then. I fill in the values for the for female with a 1 if that row is a female and a 0 if that row is a male. So I'm getting that from here. So I go through them one by one and I actually can do this manually or if, I, I, if I'm using software I can use some kind of functions available to me to, to automate the process. But the idea is very basic. So female, obviously 0, it's not a female, 0. 1, it is a female. 1, it is a female. 0, it's not. 1, it is. And so on and so forth. 0, because it's a male. OK? So in a, in a sense, I've taken dummy, which I couldn't handle before, and I've made a dummy variable out of it, 1s and zeros, which ca captures all the same information that this guy had, except now this guy, the guy in blue, I can use in my multiple regression and I, where I couldn't use this guy, OK? So let's go back to our pie sales example um, and kind of maybe build a second model um, trying to predict pie sales, this time using uh, some uh, additional, perhaps, predictors. So we have a dummy variable here that has two levels and two independent numerical variables. So we're going to try to predict pi sales. So we're still trying to predict pi sales. Okay, that's been our goal, at least as far as examples go, in throughout this lecture. I want to predict how much pies I'm going to sell. But this time, I'm not only going to use the price. 
I charge and the advertisement I spend, but also whether or not that week was a holiday, okay? So if a week was a holiday, a holiday would be yes. If a week was not a holiday, holiday would be no, okay? So clearly a holiday is a categorical variable. It's got two levels, no, it wasn't a holiday, and yes, it was a holiday, okay? So here is kind of the template for this situation because we have high sales, which is a numerical variable. That's what we want to predict. And now we have three predictors, independent variables, price, advertising, and this time we're adding holiday. But something interesting happened here. It became called yes holiday. Why? Because I made a, had to make a dummy out of holiday. So let's go forward and then come back and see what happened here. So to create a dummy from holiday, so this was the data I started with. I wanted to use this information to build a better model, perhaps, than the original one I created in the previous parts of this um, lecture. So I want to include holiday. So I can't just throw it in like this. I have to create a dummy variable first. So I choose no as my baseline. And so my column should be my dummy should be called yes but I thought that wasn't descriptive enough just so it's descriptive enough I called it yes holiday this way anyone looking at this knows what these numbers mean okay yes would have been kind of vague right yes what um, with female it was obvious what what I meant but yes is, is just much too general so I called it yes holiday is the first observation a week where it was a holiday no so I coded that as zero was the second week a holiday yes so it gets coded a one and let me skip down a bit was this week a holiday no so zero was this week yes so one and so on and so forth all the way down so in it in essence I took holiday which was a categorical variable and I made it a dummy variable okay this now I can use in my model okay so coming back here I just uh, I can explain what I me meant you can you can understand what I meant here uh, x3 this should be x this should be reading x3 is 1 if it is a holiday and and 0 if it's not a holiday so so a bit of a typo here so this should be x3 okay Now we throw that into our Google Sheets, Excel, or computer software, and we get this output. So this is the same output that we, we were working with before, except now we have more. Uh, we have a third predictor. So obviously these numbers are going to be slightly different. You see R square has gone up. Adjusted R square has gone up. Um, you see the overall F test p values. You see the p value for the sorry, rather the p values for the individual t-tests those are all important things but for this I don't want to get into that I want to just focus on the coefficient for our new uh, variable here holiday how to interpret this okay so I can pull all this out and put this in the form of our equation which I set up here okay and here we go this is the equation with actual coefficient values and appropriate variable names. So sales hat equals 415 minus 17.29. Where are these numbers coming from? Right here. 415 minus 17.29 times price, 16.34 times advertising, 89.43 times holiday. Yes, holiday. And that's where all those values came from. Okay. So Remember, yes, holiday is one if it's a holiday week and zero if it was not a holiday week. Okay, so I just want, obviously I can interpret all these guys separately like we did before, but I want to focus just on the one for our dummy variable because it has a slightly different interpretation. So here is, here is the interpretation. So this was our B3. 
89.43, what does that mean? First off, it's positive, so that's important to know. So on average, sales were 89.43 pies greater in weeks with a holiday than in weeks without a holiday, holding constant price and advertising. In other words, no matter how much we spent on pri uh, uh, advertising and how much we charged, uh, the effect of whether it was a holiday or not was 89.43, okay? So, and, and that kind of makes sense. You would, you would think that on holidays, more people would come in and buy pies uh, than on uh, weeks where there wasn't a holiday, okay? So, you could think of this as a kind of uh, on and off switch. If it is a holiday, this, this value would be one. You would plug in one here. And what happens when you multiply a number by one? Well, nothing happens, it stays. So you would be adding 89.43 to whatever else you got here, right? So you would be increasing the predicted sales by this much, right? How about if it wasn't a holiday week? Well, that would be zero. Well, we just went through why that was one and why that other, why um, zero means no holiday, right? That was the whole process of creating the dummy. Okay, so if it's not a holiday week, maybe we spent five uh, five hundred dollars on advertisement and, and we're charging five dollars and twenty five cents on price. That doesn't really matter here. Okay, this will give us whatever it does. But I, I want to focus on what's going to happen if it's not a holiday. Well, if it's not a holiday, that will be zero. That means you multiply zero by eighty nine point four three. This whole thing disappears. So it would just predicted sales would just be whatever is up to here whereas if this if it was a holiday you would be plugging in one and let's say it was still let's keep this the same we, we charge 525 and we spent five hundred dollars on advertising okay this would be what it is you can plug in those numbers and see what you get and then we would also be adding 89.43 why because it is a holiday so 1 times 89.43 is just 89.43 so we'd be adding because that's a plus 89.43 to whatever this part gives us okay in other words what I say down here on average sales were 89.43 pies greater in weeks with a holiday than in weeks without okay so the so the partial slope for a dummy variable is more like an offer on switch okay it's different than the slopes for these guys okay remember these were for every one unit increase in price there is an expected decrease in this case because it's negative of 17.29 pies sold Right. And for this guy, for every one unit increase in advertisement spent, there is an increase of 16.34 pi sold. This guy, if it's a holiday, predicted sales are expected to go up by this much. If it's not, they're expected, this disappears. Okay? So obviously, if there is a holiday, it has a positive effect on sales. Right? And so that kind of rounds up our introduction to multiple regression. So um, this is a very, very deep topic, and we kind of have touched the surface, gone a little bit beyond kind of um, uh, just the basics. We also know how to handle dummy variables and assess our model. So what I want to do is I want to create a sequence of videos now showing you how I got a lot of this output from Google Sheets uh, and other computer software. So be sure to watch that so you can replicate this. I'll be sure to use the same exact data sets that we've used like this one and come up with all the output that we did throughout these slides. So you really need to watch um, all these t uh, lectures and then watch the um, software versions to see um, that how to get these numbers, where they come from, and um, to create the dummy variable 
actually uh, get your hands dirty and make it because it, it seems pretty easy but until you do it it doesn't click okay so be sure to watch th that series as well all right so till next time have a great day